Alright guys, so we are here with another fantabulous Earth Science video. This is chapter 27 on galaxy, on stars and galaxies. I guess that's my little spaceship right there. Ooh. Uh, and I apologize if I sound awful. I have a cold, so... Yeah, that's not fun. Uh, so we're gonna start with... 27.1 which is on the characteristics of stars now we don't mean like uh, four points or five points or whatever that's just for drawing no we mean like uh, <clears throat> temperature size motion etc and we're going to deal with most of that in this video so the first section in this chapter is the classification of stars. So yeah, again, I apologize if I sound awful. Uh, one of the main ways to classify stars is color which is used to tell their temperature to an extent so we're gonna make a little chart here I'm actually copying the one out of the book so if you have the book now might be a good time to look at it cause <laughs> uh, this is gonna take a while <laughs> So yeah, blue, blue, white, we actually have two blue whites in there, I do not know why, because they're, you know, the same color, there's no actual, there's no different notation, so yellow, white, yellow, orange, and finally red. And so, then we're going to go over to surface temp, which is in degrees Celsius. So, the blue stars are the hottest. They can be over 30,000 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> and as you... No, the Fahrenheit equivalent would be much higher than that number. It's a different system. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Uh, so blue-white, the first type, goes from 10,000 10, to 30,000. So that's a big gap, as you can see. And then the second blue-white rating goes from 7,500 to that 10,000. So next we'll go down to yellow white which is approximately 6,000 to that 7,500. So that we're getting down to smaller increments. Yellow is 5,000 to 6,000 uh, and for that uh, our sun is a yellow star so that's in that temperature range and then we'll go down to orange 3,500 to 5,000 <coughs> excuse me guys uh, and then red uh stars are less than 3500 and there's actually a very famous example of this if you're into stars called uh beetlejuice i know it doesn't look like the way it's pronounced but that's that's how beetlejuice is spelled 
And so that's how you classify the stars by their color uh, to get their temperature. And the way this is done is by using a, a what is called a spectrometer. It measures the spectrum, which if you'll remember, we learned about a bit in chapter one with the redshift. Shift and the, uh, and the Doppler effect. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. <clears throat> so, color is one mode of, method of classification that gives you the surface temp. So that's another helpful way of classifying things. Uh, next is motion. Uh, apparent motion is how it appears to move due to Earth's rotation. Uh, the book gives an example of how to show this and it says to leave a camera out at night and leave the shutter open for a few hours and what you'll get is something like there's actually a picture in the book uh, I can't show on here because it's copyright but it looks kind of like it looks really eye drawing looks really awful but you get the idea each star is like a little trail leaves a trail of just colored light and you could use that light to the color to use the table I showed up here to try and classify the stars uh <coughs> excuse me guys uh another a star technically has three motions. Uh, it has three ways of moving. Uh, it rotates. Heats on its axis. Which is... Like that, kinda. It's a sucky diagram, but you know. Second way is it rotates around another star. So, like, we rotate around the sun. And then the final way is it can move towards or away from Earth. And this is where the red shift comes in. And where, uh, it appears to shift when it's moving towards or away. The wavelengths get shorter or longer. Um, <clears throat> there's the distance, which is measured in light years. Yes, like Buzz Lightyear. Uh,. And one light year is approximately, that's the approximate size, is approximately 9.5 trillion kilometers. So that's a long way. Uh, you would not get, I don't think any craft has ever traveled a light year. Um... A star will also appear to shift when viewed from different angles. 
This is called a uh, parallax. Parallax, you can look that up. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. You can look it up. It's uh, it's kind of hard to explain on a video. Um, they can also use brightness to determine a distance. Uh, the last thing is stellar magnitude um apparent magnitude is um what it uh how broad it appears from earth um and the lower the number, the lower the number, uh, the brighter it is from Earth. And so, I think that the figure for the sun is negative 27, or approximately negative 26.7 for the apparent magnitude, because it's the brightest thing in the sky. And then there's absolute... <laughs> magnitude which is um how bright it is when viewed from I believe it's 32 32.6 light years away and the sun has a positive 5 on that and I think that's about it for chapter 27.1 the characteristics of stars so I guess I'll see you guys in a little bit bye all right guys we are back we are starting with ch part two of chapter 27 stellar evolution which is about the stages of stars uh, life cycles. So the first section is on stages of development, which is about young stars. Uh, stars start as nebulae. Uh, nebula. A star starts as a nebula, plural nebulae. A nebula is a cloud of gas and dust, and they actually look really cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can look them up on Google Images or whatever you want and there will be cool stuff on there. Uh, next is, next stage is protostar which is a disk of matter is what it calls it uh, with a central concentration uh, that's supposed to say concentration uh, where pressure builds up inside the protostar will contract and build up heat, and I mean a lot of heat, until it gets to this number, 10 million degrees Celsius. Um, and that is when nuclear fusion begins. And the thing is, more than one star they form from a nebula. Um, it's, although I don't think it's very common, like I say, it's, it may form the one. So next is main, what are called main sequence stars. Um, these are basically like, um, these are actually the lo this is actually the longest stage of the life of a star. Um, energy is generated. Head um, in the core 
and it is released through Fusion. Um, Fusion is very, very hard to explain. Uh, as Radiance, uh, as Radiance energy. Um, and this is not the stage where it expands because the gravity from the core keeps the material in. The next stage is giants and super giants and I cannot write in the lines. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and this occurs when um, hydrogen fusion is over, or almost over, and this is when the outer shell, the outer shell expands uh, due to this energy. Um, a red giant, um, what it says is 10 plus times the sun, it's 10, it can be more than 10 times, actually this might be appropriate, uh, it's greater than 10 times the sun. Uh, and then a red super giant. Uh, can be more than a hundred times the size of the sun. So you can imagine that's really big. <coughs> I am sorry. Uh, get that solved before the next video. Uh, next stage is the white dwarf stage. White dwarf stars. Basically, what it is is that the star loses its outer gases which are illuminated by the heated core um, and this uh, forms a planetary uh, a planetary nebula uh, this is mostly speculation because no stars are actually in the white dwarf, white dwarf stage that we can actually see. So like, it's speculation. Uh, it may become a dead star, which is also known as a black dwarf. And this might occur when uh, the energy runs out. So next is Nova's. Um, basically, the gist of uh, what Nova is, is... <laughs> white dwarf thought exploded so basically a star that blew up uh supernovas which you might have heard of before just casually occur when super giant um 
They might occur when supergiants produce very large explosions, which could be 100 times brighter, so you can imagine that's pretty bright. Uh, we only have two more sections. Uh, neutron stars. Um, the contracted core of a supernova. Um, so yeah, it's basically what this says is it's the contracted core. And it's very condensed, which means that the energy is very, um, it's very tightly packed. Um, so it may look small, but it, on Earth it would weigh a whole lot, uh, it would weigh a ton, tons, tons, tons. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, black holes. Without a doubt, you've heard of black holes. So what this is, is a collapsed... Anyone guess? Super giant. Basically, when the star collapses in on itself. Uh, the gravity of a black hole is said to be so great that not even light can escape it, thus the name black hole. Black holes are one of the mysteries of space because you can't escape it. So, obviously, that probably means that radio waves can't escape either. So, if one of our drones went into space and got sucked up by a black hole, then... We'll probably never hear from it again. So that's 27.2. Uh, I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Bye. Alright, guys. I am back. This is the last video. And if you remember last time, I said that you could look up nebulas on Google Images. You would see some pretty cool stuff. Well, I'm going to just scroll through a couple results of... As you can see, they are pretty cool looking. They're very, uh, the best word I can think of it for it is whimsical. This one I like, that one. This one's really cool, the butterfly nebula, if you could see, see why the kind of, you can see the wings. This one's weird, it's called the Eskimo nebula. <laughs> Helix Nebula. This one's supposed to look freaky. I remember that. The Hourglass Nebula. So enough of that. Enough Nebulas. Enough Nebulae. <laughs> we are going to move on to the last section in, in the chapter called Star Groups. Yay. So, yeah, we're getting into, uh, yeah, the last part of the chapter, and this is where you start to see a lot of the stuff you might have seen before. Constellations. The first part of this. Now, all of you should probably know what constellations are, but to sum it up and two words star patterns uh there are 88 recognized constellations uh by the scientific community you could probably find more random ones that you make up yourself but there are 88 recognized ones um as you probably know they are named for 
animals, uh, like Ursa Major for the bear, and Draco for the dragon, uh, ancient gods, um, quite a few of those, um, or legendary heroes, legendary heroes, um, so like Hercules, Orion, to name a few, uh, as you have probably, if you have seen them, they do not resemble their namesakes all that much. Sucky underlining, uh, but yeah, I get the point. Um, now there are some stars that are, no, they're labeled according to, the stars in the constellations are labeled according to apparent magnitude, which is how bright they are from Earth. So the brightest star would be Alpha, second star, second brightest star would be Beta, uh, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, etc. Um, and exceptionally bright stars um, are given their own names. So you prob probably heard of Sirius, Thoughts of Barry. Very, very, very famous star, uh, Polaris, the North Star, and Betelgeuse, uh, Betelgeuse was mentioned in the first video. So yeah, three very famous stars right there. And so that's about it for constellations. You can look them up. Um, I will not be doing this that on this video. Um, but yeah, you can look them up. And you can look up these stars, most likely. Um, and the next section is... Galaxies. Uh... <clears throat> you all know, probably know what a galaxy is. Uh, a typical galaxy. So, and of course, there are no typical galaxies. Um, maybe a hundred thousand light years. In diameter that means all the way across for those of you who aren't quite up on your mathematics skills so <clears throat> from here to here that would be a hundred thousand light years and to give you an idea a hundred Billion stars. There would also be gas and dust clouds, nebulae, um, and of course stars in different stages. And there are, this is speculation on scientists' parts even. <coughs> Sorry. Ugh. between 50 billion and 1 trillion galaxies in the known universe. <clears throat> and you plug in 100 billion stars per galaxy, 
you have, you have got googles of stars. And yes, that is a real word. You can look it up. Google. Which is actually where Google got its name. And there are three types of galaxies. Um, these are the ones you'll see. Spiral galaxies. So, this is a really bad drawing, I apologize. But, I'm trying to get this over with quickly. So, yeah. If the arms will spiral outward and it'll have a central concentration um and our galaxy the milky way galaxy is a very good example of this uh the next one is an elliptic elliptical galaxy which is like a disc and there are all the little stars and blah 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 <clears throat> so basically it's a disc shaped galaxy and then of course there are irregular galaxies um, which don't have much definition as to shape so they could look something like that 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 that, that, that. They could look like cartoon clouds in shape. They could look like three leaf clovers. That, 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 that. The possibilities for regular galaxies are endless. And of course, uh, all of these and all the stars and planets and everything, does everyone know how? Scientists theorize that it might have gotten started. Yes, the big bang theory. This is how everyone thinks the universe got started, <coughs> which is basically. Mushroom cloud explosions. And so, yeah, that's about it for chapter 27. Uh, signing off here, guys. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.